Let's give it a go. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of RevLog. Andy here. Today I have a very exciting car I rented as a sleigh ride for a Christmas gifts give out. The 981 Boxer is slowly becoming sort of a bargain in the car industry, isn't it? It's been considered a benchmark for many, many car enthusiasts and automotive journalists. Is the 981 Boxer a bargain of the century? And how does it compare to the A90 Supra in terms of value? I understand that I'm comparing a used and a new car, but realistically, I think the buyers will cross shop these two cars. Really looking forward to this drive, and let's hit the road and find out for ourselves how good this car is. The 981 generation is, in my opinion, where it really grew up. Gone are the days where the Boxer used to share a bunch of parts with the 911. Compared to the 987, the fender humps have been flattened out a bit, and the intake opening is much more prominent. In the space model, I do miss the four dotted LED DRLs that remind me of the Porsche Le Mans race car. Inside the 981 is pretty much the same story. It now feels like an expensive quality cabin, even without the stitched leather dash. It's nice to get the information like the oil temp and pressure. There are a few negatives though. First of all, what is it with the manufacturers that place the brake pedal higher up than the gas pedal? It's really strange and gets in the way. I really don't like the center lock unlock location. Many journalists have bashed this thing. Yeah, don't do it. Just get the sport steering wheel with the proper pedal shifts. And apparently the sport steering wheel is even smaller, which is perfect because I did think the base wheel could be a little bit smaller. For the gear lever itself, I get the Porsche wanted you to use the thing, so it's kind of a large piece. Unfortunately, it's really awkward to access the buttons behind the lever, and it's backwards. The plus should be when you pull the lever. Notably, this also has been changed on the 718. Small annoyance, but the gear lever features do not light up. And of course, the cup holders are just bad. At least the location isn't idiotic like my S2000 or the Miata. But this is a sports car, who cares about cup holders and practical space, right? As for the base seat, it gets you nice and low, but the shoulder support is slightly lacking and the headrest is quite far away, geared more towards track day usage with the helmet. Doesn't break the deal for me, but if you're looking for a daily driver, it may bother you. We're going to be doing our usual creek test up here. It's not bad, I, you know, I hear a little bit of something, but 
for a 2014 with 56,000 miles, it's it's honestly really not that bad. Let's go around again one more time. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Feels really solid. This is probably one of the stiffest convertible I've ever driven actually. Coming up to the roundabout, my usual test course. We'll let the boxy scion get ahead of us, give some room. And then here we go. Super planted. <laughs> the rear end is just planted. The car just goes exactly where I want. A little bit of roll, but you know, nothing crazy. Uh, feels pretty natural. You know, you always want a little bit of roll, uh, especially for the public roads where you have a lot of bumps and dips. Um, I mean, really, it's a pretty, pretty solid package. Uh, the, the roll speed is very well controlled. So the amount of roll, I, you know, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, I think this is a, a very good balance of having just enough compliance to just run over the bumps and dips on the everyday roads here in California. Um, and not upsetting the chassis. So I, I think it's very well judged. It does ride a little bit busier than I had anticipated actually uh, because the base model rides on the 18 inch wheels um, and just by looking at the tire thickness, I, I thought it would actually ride very supple, um, but because of the overall stiffness, it, it does ride a little bit busier than I had anticipated, but it's not that bad really. So we're coming up to our usual tunnel so I'm gonna drop it in sport and it immediately drops the gear and let's drop it a couple of gears third gear go for it okay drop the second for me <laughs> and we're gonna slow down <laughs> back to the regular act like nothing happened <laughs> <laughs> I think on the way back I'm gonna try top down. <laughs> God, that was awesome. Just the sound. I mean, because this is the base model without the uh, active exhaust tuning or the the valves that are opening up, I do wish that there was a little bit more sound. Um, you know, I've, I've, obviously there's plenty of options for aftermarket, um, but man, it's just. The overall powertrain package in terms of the, the engine and the transmission, it never feels strained. Like, it, it feels like you could always rev it out. And <sighs> this PDK is just, oh man. There's a reason why every journalist are just head over heels on this transmission. I mean, uh, the ZF8 speed in my wife's BMW is, is an excellent transmission for automatic. It shifts real fast and it's, you know, it's really smooth. Uh, the PDK is everything plus that. Um, and we're going to uh, take a look when we take off at the light here. It doesn't even exhibit that weird clutch engagement that a normal you know, dual clutch has. Um, I mean, just the car is always just ready to go. I mean, you can tell right there. I downshifted to third just to make sure that you know I don't over rev the car and, and look out for it. But the car downshifted to second on its own and it just took off. But here, let's take a look. See, when it engages, it like I can't even tell it's a dual clutch actually. Just the way it goes about from and you know, out of the hole, it's super smooth engagement, nothing weird. Oh, man, they they really perfected this uh, dual clutch transmission. And I'm going 50 miles an hour already in seventh gear, uh, just you know cruising along in 1500 RPMs. I mean the the car's barely breathing, but it just it just feels so easy. Uh, and I've driven a 987 Boxer Spider, uh, and for me that's kind of the ultimate Porsche, uh, realistic dream car sort of. And I, I still remember that that test drive when I came back out of the car <laughs> and the steering feel on that car. That hydraulic steering, it was just perfection. Um, this car, obviously, because it's the base model, I don't think it's a fair comparison. Um, it's, it's not, you know, uh, as communicative as a 987, uh, but really, it's really not that bad. I, I think, 
um, it's it's really like people that are complaining about EPS um, you know you need to drive this car I really don't think it's as bad um, I do find it a little bit strange that the the variable steering ratio how it works uh, and maybe it's me, but I, I find it strange that in lower speeds it feels a little bit heavier and at higher speeds um, it loosens up a bit. I guess it helps with um, not feeling nervous, um, but I would figure that it should work the other way around actually for the ease of uh, parking lot uh, speeds. Um, I would want it to loosen up actually in lower speeds, um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's something that I guess you just got to get used to with variable steering rack. I've, I've never had a car with a variable rack, so it, it was just something I found a little bit strange. And of course, like every tour car I've rented, uh, this does not have the OE tires. I think it's, some sort of, it's on some sort of Goodyear tires. So, you know, there's a few discrepancies here and there. Uh, but overall, I mean, just this overall package... Uh, as a daily driver that you really feel uh, like you're in a sports car sitting down low and you know getting all the feels through the the steering and the brakes i mean yeah th this is this is a a benchmark for for the industry and i totally understand why and speaking of the brakes man it's <laughs> it's very hard to describe uh in summary, it just feels amazing. You feel like you have a lot of modulation. It's not overly touchy like some of the older BMWs have driven, where you just move a toe and it, you know you just kind of <laughs> plant yourself into the steering wheel. Um, you feel like you have a lot of modulation. It's very smooth, yet it feels extremely solid in the pedal feel. Uh, it's one of the best in the industry, really. So for me, this type of ride is bearable, but I think for someone that's looking to have that perfect balance of daily driver it could ride a little bit busy for your taste now being a 2014 uh, when i first saw the refresh of this design especially the interior i, I thought they really upped the, the design game it just feels like a uh, way more expensive car especially in comparison to the, uh, to the 987 even though personally for me i love the way the 987 feels when i drive it um i I think it's actually starting to show a little bit of age, actually. Um, you know, when you have a classic analog gauge, it always helps. Um, but the overall graphics is kind of a, a warm tone white um, and a lot of buttons here. Uh, the overall cabin, I mean, it's still okay for 2014, but it, it is starting to show a little bit of age, I think. Okay, I do think this car, you can open the top while you're moving. Let's see. Here we go. This is what the open airing is all about, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, I was. I think I stayed below 40 miles an hour, and the top just opened up for me. Real easy, just one-click operation. Man, this is nice. Being able to do that on the move. Obviously, I I only have a 15-year-old Honda convertible, you know, so I'm used to my basics, <laughs> but. This is a very definition of not having to drive the car so fast. You can drive it at any speed and still have a lot of fun. Oh man. Turn on the heated seats. <laughs> it's a little brisk out here today at 68 degrees for you uh, Northeast uh, people out there. Sorry, I'm complaining about 68 degrees in the winter, but <laughs> that's Southern California for you. I'm approaching the same tunnel again. Sport mode. Let's see, drop a couple of gears. <laughs> it like second gear. Let's give it a go. alone <laughs> what <a car. laughs> man we're gonna go through my usual series of on and off ramps uh, to get a taste of what this car can do on the public roads hopefully not a lot of traffic out there but we shall see and that boxer engine just burbling away at you even at a stoplight I mean it's just such an emotional 
experience. Here we go. Back on sport. I think it gets a little bumpy here, so let me just clear this. It's not a problem with this car though, see? That's a pretty, rather large bump, but it doesn't even upset the chassis at all. <laughs> the gear right shit. Oh my god, this is just so easy. <laughs> it does feel like it wants to push a little bit, but zero, zero issues. I mean, anyone can drive this fast. Oh. Easily the quietest convertible. I'm driving at 70 mile, 75 miles an hour now. You know, the wind noise is very good. If anything, actually, it's coming more from the tire well, but from the, the roof, because it's a, a double layer canvas, yeah, you don't really hear a lot of wind noise. Let's get around this car. It's a rather large bump, you know, but no feels there. Sorry, there's some cars around me, so I'll have to be responsible. <laughs> Third gear. You know, just getting a taste. It, this is public road, so I can't really push it. Still third gear. Yeah, I would say the balance is a little bit more towards understeer first. So I can feel the front end naturally washing out, but the rear end is just pinned. And over those bumps, I mean, that's a pretty bumpy road, but it still stays planted. Come on. run into traffic but that was that was enough for me to get a taste of what the car is capable of doing <sighs> man <laughs> what a package <laughs> back to normal So it's been a few days since I've returned a car and the excitement is subdued enough for me to make a clear statement about the car. I intentionally rented the base model with no options to see if the essence of the car is still worth the asking price. And I really cannot think of any other car that matches the overall experience and the chassis stiffness while still being compliant and the emotional factors like the sound of the boxer motor behind your ears. This is a special vehicle indeed. And we should be grateful that a car is for the most part a depreciating asset so a mere mortal like you and I can aspire to own one of these. Thank you so much for staying till the very end of this episode and I will see you in the next one.